Okay, so for our next project, we are going to make a tree collage out of construction paper. Um, but you're going to have to make some choices as to what color you want your tree to be and what color you want your background to be. What I'd like you to do is to choose complementary colors. So if I have a green tree, which is a cool color, um, the opposite color, the complement of green, would be red because red is across from green on the color wheel. If I picked out um, a yellow-orange tree, what's directly across from yellow-orange is blue-violet. So that would be the opposite, and that would be my background. Um, if I wanted a blue tree, I would have to choose an orange background because that is the complement of blue. Whatever is opposite a color on the color wheel is its complement. And what's nice about these colors is if I put blue and orange together, they actually make each other brighter because that's one of the rules of color. If I put red and green together, they become brighter. If you mix them, like in paint, they will turn black, brown, or gray. But if you put them next to each other, they really stand out. Okay, so I'm going to choose to do a blue tree. And I'm going to put my blue tree on a, an orange background. Now, I wanted to talk to you about a nice way that you can make trees. I've never told you guys how to draw something, but I think this is some good advice on how to dry, draw trees. Um, you can take my advice and do it this way. You can do it your own way, but I do want to see a tree with lots of branches. Um, I also want your tree to start at the bottom of this paper and it needs to end at the top of the paper. I want these to be pretty big. Okay, so when I do trees and I start at the bottom, I make a pretty wide trunk and then I like to make a series of V's. So I'm going to make a V shape right here. I'm not really planning this out. I'm just making V's where I think a V could go. I make a V right here. Now this right here is a branch of the tree and this is a branch of the tree and this is a branch of the tree. Now I'm going to keep going up and I'm going to make more V's. The farther up I go, the skinnier the branches become. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this side. I'm just going to keep adding V's. And again, if you'll notice, if it starts to get a little fatter, I'll just put another V in there to make it skinny. Do another V here. V. V. Sometimes I make really wide V's. Sometimes I make skinny V's. It's really up to you. You can make tree branches overlap. Maybe this is going to go in front. Maybe this one will go behind. Here's another branch that's overlapping. But I really want you to try to make your tree start at the bottom and end at the top or close to the top. It's also nice if you can get some of these branches to go out to the side or the edges of your paper. I think I can make this tree bigger. Like I said, I want you to try to get try I want you to try to get at least one branch to touch the top. is getting pretty complicated. But again, I'm just repeating these V's 
over and over and over again. You know what's interesting is I saw a YouTube video on tree making where another art teacher was teaching her class how to do this, and I can remember a kid from my own classroom when I was in the first grade standing up in front of us showing us how to make trees this way. Anyway, I'm not a great believer in telling people how to draw things, but I do think that drawing trees this way is kind of a neat thing to know how to do. And it is pretty accurate. Trees do get skinnier as they move towards the sky. And doing this helps you do that and you can make your trees pretty complicated. Okay, so this is my drawing of the tree. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out. You guys are going to be using pencil for this. You're not using a Sharpie marker. Um, I used a Sharpie marker so that you could see better how to draw the tree. Hopefully, if you use pencil, you can just use the back of the tree and nothing will be on the back. Mine is kind of a mess because of the Sharpie marker, but that's okay. Now, one thing I try to tell you guys when you cut is to make sure that you remember that cutting is a two-handed job. So as I'm cutting this paper, my left hand, because I'm left-handed, is using the scissors, and my right hand is turning the paper to make it easier on my left hand. So I've got cutting hand right here, and boss, bossy hand right there. So bossy hand turns the paper. I'm going to try to cut out all of my branches. Uh, if I don't get all of them, that's okay. Some of these that I drew on here are pretty complicated, especially ones that have some overlap right here. Like I'm going to have to like poke my scissors through, uh, which can be kind of dangerous. If you have anything like that on your picture and you need some help, just let me know and I will help you. And I'm going to turn the video off um, until I finish cutting, and then I'll show you the next step.